Kandel's neural basis of. Kandel chose the Aplysia or Californian sea slug because of the simplicity of its nervous system in that it only has 20,000 neurons in its entire body as opposed to, say, the human brain, which has 100 billion. And indeed, some of the neurons were so large and so simplistic that they can actually be seen and studied with the naked eye. Using a thin electrode, Candell stimulated the siphon and initially the aplysia reflexively contracted the siphon, this tail-like structure as a defence mechanism. In addition, it reflexively withdrew its gill, which is a delicate respiratory structure. So initially, in response to the electrode, the sensory information would be conveyed to the central nervous system and a motor response would be triggered and thus the gill would be reflexively withdrawn as a protective mechanism given its role in survival. Now through days and weeks of repeated stimulation via the electrode, the actual aplysia had become habituated to no longer, I guess, reflexively respond to the threat or the potential threat of the electrode. So it would no longer produce a motor response, i.e. A memory had been established. So based on Kandel's research finding there are three critical aspects to the neural basis of memory formation. So number one is the actual dendritic growth of the actual post synaptic neurons almost branching out and reaching out to basically make new neural connections with other presynaptic neurons. Secondly, we had the release of additional electrochemical messages from the presynaptic neuron in the form of the neurotransmitters. Thirdly, and really the critical aspect of the neural basis of memory formation was the establishment of long-term potentiation. I like to use the acronym LLEST to describe what we mean by LTP, so Long Lasting Enhancement of Synaptic Transmission. So we get this very efficient neural circuitry being established so that when we revisit that memory, we'll get this very efficient communication process in terms of the release of neurotransmitters to the, the postsynaptic neuron. And that's how, basically, we have memory formation.